Alaska for sure is the most unique state that I've ever been to. A lot of this is just so raw. You'd have your own private ski resort. I mean, who doesn't want that? You know, go get lost in Denali National Park. Even by Alaska's standards, it doesn't get much more isolated and untamed than Denali National Park. It's like a whole world of mountains and ski lines and clouds and things that, you know, you got to put it on your list to see. It's um, spectacular. The vast, untapped wilderness and the shadows of North America's highest peak calls to adventurers like Jackson Hole's own Jess McMillan and Forrest Jilson. Coming in here for the first day on the first flight, I had seen some pretty big mountains along the way, but these dwarfed everything. Ruth Glacier was basically straight out of a dream. It was kind of like starstruck. There's always one peak that you can see off in the distance, and it's kind of like she's always watching you, always keeping an eye on you, and there's something about her that makes you want to go say, hey, Denali, what's up? What do you have? What do you have? In the mid-60s, legendary Alaskan bush pilot Don Sheldon flew in enough lumber to build a six-sided hut on the Ruth Glacier, about 10 miles from what was then known as Mount McKinley. We're going to take a trip late tonight. We're going to be in a haze. Alaska's full of legends. It's kind of like coming to superhero camp. All the pioneers, all the adventurers hang out, and it's been that way for forever. Would the Sheldon Mountain House as their base camp, Jess and Forrest rely on only themselves to explore deep in the Denali wilderness. They saw it as the promised land, as a place for adventure and to test yourself and probably a little bit, you know, lose yourself. Waking up in the morning and having the, the mountains around you greet you, it's just otherworldly. And I think it's good medicine. For me, the neat part of ski touring is losing yourself in the mountains. When we set out in the morning, we're not following anyone's tracks or anything like that. We may look at a peak and say, hey, let's go check that out. And there's no guarantees. We could ski tour for three hours over there and the snow could be terrible, but that's part of it. That's part of exploring. I think there's a part of the human spirit that wants that and, and needs that. And Denali National Park, there isn't a better place to do that. It was like game on for Forrest. He didn't know if he'd ever be back here again, but he was gonna boot pack up any peak, ski any line, just savor every single moment that he had. Oh, holy moly. I'd done a little bit of glacier travel. Nothing of this type, though, where the glaciers were so huge. You really had to have your wits about you and assess all the risks far in advance. She'd be out. Yeah. You weren't just going to go meander anywhere without really thinking about things. Thanks, one. It was awesome, but it was also like, whoa, like, this is unlike anything I've ever really done. There's plenty of variety out here if you, you know, wanted to find yourself on top of something that get your heart rate going a little bit quicker than, you know, your previous run. It, 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 it's out here if you want it. I think it's maybe one of the best kept secrets out there. Find some good snow, ski tour, Check it out, just be here. And we were able to find some great couars, some really nice faces, and 
some awesome snow, which I wasn't sure we were going to get that. It's really impressive to see what people have done thus far, but it's also really wild to think about what hasn't been done yet. Denali will always inspire exploration and discovery, so it's safe to say the possibilities are endless.